Hello and welcome to Hobson Bros. This week, a very we're, special uh, episode. It's it's weird. It's weird. I feel like we're uh, you know we're we're playing some Fortnite game, or I don't know what what the the kids are into these days. And um, this week, glitter beers. For an open window on the trivia world, Max and Chris from Hobson. Hobson. Welcome to Hobson Bros. Yeah. All right. So first off, I've got to thank uh, a bunch of people, and I'm gonna forget people, so I'm not gonna name anyone. I'm just everyone uh, who was featured in the last video. Thank you. Thank you so much. It means a lot. It means the world to me right now. I, literally, I was sitting here first week. Uh, I'm feeling down because I'm far from everyone. And then Chris makes this video, which was surprising. And as you know me and as Chris knows me, I wasn't going to watch it entirely because I hate watching myself in videos. <laughs> but favorite Chris, part. the whole... Chris the whole day uh, was texting me asking me if I saw the video and this and that and then I guess he posted on Facebook and you guys started messaging on Facebook and, and I was in class, I was in brewery class so I did not have a chance to look at anything uh, which turned out perfectly. But uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm actually currently in uh, St. Catharines. Uh, I attend the brewmaster program at Niagara College. Uh, and this is the cup they gave me when I came in. Uh, it's a lovely cup with a little cup holder, little thingy for bottle caps over here, and uh, great for patio. Anyways, that's what I have. Chris? Uh... <laughs> that's the introduction, but um, <laughs> while Max decided to move on uh, to go to brewing uh, school, a lot of things happen on the interwebs and on the internet. Interwebs, internet, pretty much the same thing, Max, right? Uh, inter I, I prefer interwebs. I find it's a more accurate description of the internet. Uh, right. But I'm also uh, older than most people. Uh, okay. Not most, older than some, sorry. My <laughs> yeah, 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 we're, we're not, not naming people. <laughs> That's not what we're doing. So uh, there's been a lot of rambling around on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, name it, Reddit even. Um, what the hell is going on with glitter beers? Glitter. Which to me is a weird concept. I, when I saw it, I thought it was, um, it did have some sex appeal. When you look at it, it looked like a, like a universe just turning and swirling in the beer because the CO2, I guess, affects the, uh, the glitter uh, in a way that it moves, constantly moves. Yeah. Uh, which, interesting, but not really my piece of uh, pie. Anyway, so th did you put glitter in your beer? Not yet. Should I do it right now in front of the camera? I might as well try it out. See what see what happens. Okay. Uh, while All right. I ramble so on a bit about, it's uh, a whole new setup, right? I can say back to you, Max. Yeah, kind of. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this, but we're gonna find a way. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna work, guys. Bear with us for the next 16 months. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be good. It's, be it's good really. Times. It's already super good. So uh, I'll do. I'll do the live <laughs> experiment of putting glitter in the beer. So that's gonna be the first. Uh, Real-time experience you'll see with the, I guess, Craft Beer 101 being uh, recorded from afar. At a distance, yeah, a distance. yeah. So, so, so it's a long-distance relationship for the bros. All right, so I got the focus on this glitter. It's going straight into the beer. I don't want to sprinkle too much. Which is one thing, Chris. Are you on autofocus uh, area and face recognition for you? Yeah, something like that. So it's coming back to yeah. my face right now, and I should be good. I think. Yeah, I, I tried it on mine too. I like it. It's it's kind of cool. It does have one advantage, the fact yeah. that in a distance. Yeah, I think I didn't choose the right glitter. <laughs> I literally just no? have glitter on top of my beer. It's <laughs> yeah, but anyway, no, it so looks I'll like shit. It. I'll put more. I'll put more. So while Max explained the whole history of uh, how glitter got into beer. I'll just uh, try to make it work on my end. Maybe swirl it a bit, Chris. Maybe yeah. try something like that. That's what um, I'm trying. It's weird. So basically, glitter beer is is extremely new. Uh, the first time I heard about it, and the first time I think it, it really appeared in the uh, in the spectrum of the beer community was uh, last St. Patrick's Day. So uh, people were extremely pissed about the the green putting green dye in your beer. There was a whole movement against that. And then at the same time, in sort of a parallel, uh, a couple videos, a couple uh, short boomerangs started appearing on Instagram about 
glitter beer. And it kind of replaced that for St. Patrick's Day. It was kind of a, instead of green for St. Patrick's Day, mo it was more like finding the treasure on St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day, you know, the, the leprechaun and all that stuff. I have a hard time hearing myself, which is, is awkward. It's a little weird. We're going to have to work on this. You, you already don't <laughs> like seeing yourself, and now you're like, I don't like hearing myself. Oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. Get uh, yourself anyways, so together, Max. I, another thing I wanted to mention is uh, to me, beer has always been sort of where art meets science. I think I got and it, Max. The, you got it. It works. Yeah, yeah, bring, it works. Bring it to the other camera. Yeah, yeah, right there. Do you see it? Oh yeah, it works. Okay, that's that's what it is. That's what I. Yeah, saw. but okay. but okay. you know what happened? What? My beer turned flat. Totally flat. Oh, immediately, eh? Yeah, that yeah. Is, uh, that is interesting. It's really flat. Okay, sorry. Go back to the story. Sorry about that. Holy shit. Um, That's really So Yeah, different. so beer to me has always been where art meets science. And in this case, for the glitter beers, it's exactly what it is, right? So some artist wanted to do something special with beer, wanted to do something different, uh, and found a way to do it. And now it's part of the science of beer. If you add a certain kind of glitter to your beer, uh, you're going to get this effect on it, which is an interesting effect. I won't take away that, but it's not for me. I don't I personally don't really like it. Does it change the taste? Yeah, yeah, it's not. No. Yeah, it's not uh, good. Fuck eh? it. it fucked up my beer. Yeah. I'm, well, I guess if, sorry, if it's Dad. a beer brewed, yeah, I guess if it's a beer brewed uh, to have the glitter in it, you might be able to find other ways. I hear um, New England IPAs have been mostly used uh, for for glitter beers. Yeah. But it's it's but just back weird to you, because Chris. yeah yeah <laughs> oh Max sorry there's a little bit of delay <laughs> since you're in St. Catherine's but um, yes so it added uh, that it's surprisingly it looks really cool like I'd love to go to a bar and maybe order this beer shamelessly like I don't mind it looks really cool but uh, I'm using it in this uh, great little pilsner from Mabrasserie I had it without uh, the um, this stuff and with and now we create that kind of like sweetness that tastes like fake sweetness you know mm -hmm. uh which uh max already know about it i'm really really uh off on the like fake sweetness stuff so really the taste uh does get not where i want to be with glitter beers but it looks really awesome so i guess for sweeter beer uh, you spoke about New England IPAs, maybe milkshake IPAs would be something really awesome to add uh, to it just to create that nice effect and just beer is mostly market, not mostly marketing, but uh, it's, it kind of is Chris in the end, exactly, it, yeah. there's, there's a lot that goes into the quality of the beer, but there's also a lot that goes behind the marketing and behind the image of the beer to be able to sell it. And this is, in my opinion, yeah. uh, hundred percent marketing. It's not, there's not much to add flavor. So the beer does not much to add anything special to the beer. No. It's just to make it look good. Exactly. <laughs> and not good, but different. Speaking of the ingredient, uh, it's mostly made with sugars, uh, gum ara arabic, which is another sugar, uh, maltodextrin, uh, cornstarch, uh, but also color additives. So if you have allergies to color additives such as um, mica base, pearlescent pigments, uh, FDNC colors such as blue number one, which is something I really don't know about, but some people are allergic to that. and. Also, if you have some, uh, you're prone to a digestive problem, uh, eating stuff with glitter could be an issue. So uh, be aware, oh. ask the brewer or the maker that uses uh, glitter to in their recipes, um, what are the origins of the glitter? Because uh, it's really important to point out, if you want to go really cheap, you can find uh, fake glitters, uh, which are used for mostly when you were a kid, uh, playing with cardboard and glue and just putting glitters everywhere. These are not edible glitters. It's mostly made with plastic. So you gotta be really cr careful with those. Like you're playing with something that's sparkly and all that stuff, but it's also a little bit fake. So you gotta be careful. Um, that's why it's strongly suggested to even the non-toxic one and the edible ones to just ingest a small amount of it. So I have a beer, not two, not three, not four. Uh, be careful with it because you never know. It's it's something different. It's something that's not really. Uh, it's synthetic, so you got to be careful with that. Another thing I wanted to point out about it is that uh, if you want to put it the right way, uh, usually they recommend three grams per thirty liter 
of beer if you want to mix it up okay. in the fermenter uh, not in the fermenter uh, the fermented, the so it's before packaging so before putting yeah. it into kegs this is where the gator the glitter goes in because it could play with the fermentation since uh, it's mostly sugar, it sugar. so yeah. got to be careful with that. And I'm not sure about the other ones. It might react really weird with uh, yeast. I'm not sure. If there's like a brewer out there that knows a little bit more, Max? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try to figure it out. Like slowly I'm thinking like, would it be a good project beer or not? So I think I'll make that the question of the week. Let me know uh, what kind of project beers you think uh, or if you think a glitter project beer would be a good beer or not, yeah, uh, I'm leaning towards the not. But let us know in the comments below what you think of glitter beers. You know, just because yeah, it's that's that true. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not. Again, I'm not enthused, but I'm not necessarily against it. I think it can be interesting, yeah. and I don't want to stop the creativity that people have in the beer industry because you need that to be able to create new styles. I mean, the milkshake IPA came from that. Yeah. Uh, and even the New England, to some extent, came from wanting to to play with ingredients and play with the ways we brew yeah. uh, to be able to get a different product, which in this case, you get a very different product, uh, something that would be more akin to robots than humans. But, you know, <laughs> we're all a little robot. Robots are unicorns. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like the glitter comes from the unicorn yeah, to be okay. able to fuel the robot's uh, energy cells. You know, it's just that's that's my theory. That's uh, science. It doesn't have to be right, but that's my theory. I, I'm glad you went to school for that. You know, <laughs> I'm on week one, man. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> uh, but um, another thing I want to point out: you won't see glitter bears on the shelves of your local beer stores soon <laughs> because uh, as you can already see the glitter tends to settle down really really fast in the beer and also it kills off the co2 in the beer which is something i really do hate so i don't know if yeah. maybe me putting it my like by myself in the beer creates the kill off that happens in my beer or um doing it in the packaging pushing co2 through it will keep the co2 when you put it in your glass yeah, I think it's mostly them. That's what they usually put in the kegs. And if I remember correctly, for most breweries, they never really canned it or never bottled it. It was all like uh, in a pint, in a, in, a, in a pint of beer. Okay. Um, which is, I think, how you should yeah. consume this beer. I, th I think yeah. so. It's just, you got to keep the authenticity of the beer with changing its appearance. I think that's kind of like the debate that's going on right now because yes it does change a little bit of the flavors in there but if the recipe is made to be glittered then the balance should be there and should have any issues tasting the beer but it's the appearance that changes and uh it brought a lot of back of the um the sexism that's present in beer mostly males maybe probably ate seeing glitter beers but i've seen a lot of women in beer embracing the fact that there's glitter beers even lgbt communities are embracing this new trend in beer because it's different and it showcases i guess a softer side of beer correct me yeah, if i'm I wrong i don't want to start a debate on that but i think it's my part of the thing let it be what it is and let the brewers push the creativity forward into the beer uh it's well said chris i know well said. where did i get that yeah. Shit. Is it me? Well uh, said because I have a nosebleed. I also... Nosebleed. Uh. You really? No, no, no. Fake. <laughs> Cinema. Okay. <laughs> My God. <laughs> so if you like the video, please uh, leave a like and, and bear with us for a couple weeks. We're, we're still trying a couple different things to be able to make this work and it yeah. will work. Uh, it's going to be different for sure, but we... Love your support. Again, a big thanks to not just the people from the other video, but just everyone. Uh, a lot of support out there. A lot of people who are pushing me forward and it, it, it's warming my heart. Uh, it's going to help me through these next couple of weeks who are going to be tough. Um, and yeah, so thanks for watching. Yeah. Uh, anything else to add, Chris? Uh, just uh, there's plenty of cool stuff coming up. Uh, if you'd like those type of video, uh, we'd like to, like give us the feedback uh, because it's a lot of work that we put in there and having your feedback help us just pushing it a little bit further. And uh, I know I'm going to be doing a lot of some different stuff in the next weeks. Just let me know when you don't like it. Don't put a thumbs down. Just, just let me know what's going on. Be and, constructive. Uh, yeah, be constructive. So <laughs> thanks a lot for everything, guys. Uh, I'll... 
probably dump this beer and switch it up for another one and we see you yes max you have the n word uh, so. yeah so uh, well first off we'll see you in the next video but uh if you want to buy us a beer and you can't necessarily ship it to us uh but you still you want to support the show in some way uh check us on patreon so it's a great way to uh to send us a bit of cash and then we can go out and buy the beer ourselves naturally you can join us on the uh this Discord channel, yep. or even on Facebook or any other medium to let us know which beer you would like for us to uh, review next or to talk about next. So the ball's in your court, uh, but Patreon is the best way we've found to be able to uh, accommodate some things like that. And again, thanks for the support. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs> ding. There you go. Yeah. I did the ding my, myself. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>